the big cats of four million years ago lost the cover they needed for ambush. These heavily armed hunters had a short burst of speed, but in a straight chase, they didn't have the stamina to keep up with these speedy prey. But the dogs had long legs and endurance. The heirlooms of their wandering past gave them speed and stamina. They could hunt the new fast prey as a running pack. The cats were left standing. team of fast-running social hunters. The African wild dog pack became a killing unit. It looks brutal, but it's merely efficient, and evolution rewards efficiency. Pack hunting proved a very successful way of life based on large, sometimes very large, family units. Several species of running pack hunter spread across the globe. As recently as a thousand years ago, at the pinnacle of the dog's success, the wild dog covered the plains of Africa. The red dog ranged across much of Asia. The social dingo spanned Australasia. and the grey wolf covered the entire northern hemisphere, making it the most widespread hunter on the globe. And it was the wolf that was to take one more evolutionary step towards that unreachable goal, the perfect hunter. Not only did wolves have endurance and speed, not only did they hunt in a pack, now they went beyond a simple straight line pursuit. They started to use strategy. In the bleak Canadian tundra, a wolf pack is after caribou. The caribou are bigger and faster than the wolves over a the distance. There's no cover for the wolves to use ambush, but they still get their prey. This is how it was done. Three wolves have previously taken up position ahead of the herd and on the right flank. Two other wolves start a stern chase. As the two wolves tire, one of the flankers takes up the pursuit. The fourth wolf attacks from the right front, splitting the herd of caribou. The confused and tiring animals are again frontally attacked by the fifth wolf, and a caribou is caught, but not killed. But its fate is sealed when the second wolf arrives, and the animal is finally dispatched by the rest of the pack. Strategy has succeeded where strength and speed could not. The wolf's special success lay in its ability to call on its entire evolutionary past, 
to live a life like its ancestors, as a solitary forager of small prey, carrion and berries. Or to combine as a pack to bring down the largest of prey. The dog's triumph seemed complete. But a new hunter had arrived. Man first competed with, then persecuted the wolf and its cousins in the wild. Over vast areas, the pack hunting dogs have been all but wiped out. Where wolves once roamed, today they survive only as symbols of an ancient ferocity. The dogs that survive best today are the inconspicuous wanderers, the hunters of small prey. The red fox can live in the shadow of man as its ancestors once lived in the shadow of the cats. Of all the dogs and cats alive today, perhaps these foxes, the dogs who have remained true to their remote past, are the real winners. The top cats and dogs may have run their race as the major hunting groups, but there is another story yet to be told. For there was a third family of carnivores which could do all they could and more. A family which flourished on the scraps which fell from the rich man's table. The scavengers. Next week, we tell their story. <laughs> 